Now, if you've watched this show before, you know these are colors. I am, you know, I'm not Miss Pink person. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here comes a good one. <laughs> Unexpected in the shadows. I like to put. Actually, I like to put unexpected things everywhere. I don't know. You ever remember being a kid and uh, playing with the shadows on the wall and doing little birds? And <laughs> Hi, welcome to Give Your Walls Some Soul. I'm Shanna Grissom. Today we're going to be working on the mission, uh, San Juan Batista. And you know, there are days when you, uh, you have tons of paintings lined up and you know exactly what you're going to work on and there are others where you're just not sure where to go and where to start. Um, and I wasn't sure what I was going to do this show, but uh, when I saw the mission, that was it. I had to paint it. Now, I took the picture of the reference photo of the mission on a very cloudy gray day, so it's boring. But one of the great things about art is that um, you can make it anything you want it to be. So when you get to see the reference photo you'll notice that it has absolutely well very little red in it and that's just not going to do so i thought wouldn't it be fun to paint the sky with a little bit of red and uh, since it's backlit have the warmth come from behind and so the sky will have this tinge of red and the and the front will be cool so i'm going to give it a shot we're going to see what happens first thing i'll do is grab white and a bit of red and mix that and really block in the sky so it's not going to be fire engine red although I thought about doing that I'm going to take a little bit of cad red light and mix it we're going to need lots of that so it's almost a peachy color and so that it's not too pink because every time you add white to red it gets pink or peachy I'm at a little bit of uh, cad yellow deep, just to warm that up a bit. And I'm going to block this in just at the top part of the sky. I'm going to paint over the cross to start with, so that I don't have to paint around it later. So I just put my brush in some liquid, which is a painting medium, and then crisscross strokes. I'm blocking in the sky. Okay, it was crisscross, now I'm just scribbling. See, right over the top of the cross, we'll put that in later. We can still see it, at least I can. So this is not an in-your-face red, but it does give it some warmth back here. And as it gets toward the bottom, I'll lighten up the color a bit. Yep, I'm happy with that color. That's good. They filmed Vertigo at the mission. Uh, somebody was saying, it's, well, it's, I'm trying to think how many years ago. Uh, but it, it's been a while. It's a beautiful church and a uh, great place to go painting. So this looks really pink right now next to the white of the canvas, but w once we start filling in the other areas, it'll almost look white. Now you could do a smooth background and, and use a bigger brush, but I like the energy that's going on with the sky. It makes it look like something's happening. I 
And that's good because you'll have the calmness of the mission and the steady, solid object against the busyness of the world. I really like how that, what that represents. A nice refuge. So you can see just putting the paint down, especially in these initial stages when you first get started, it's great to do something that's that busy and that quick. It gives you this, this sense of uh, completion and, um, and it, it just gets you off to a good start instead of futzing with something from the beginning. I find that if I'm playing around with something from the beginning, then that whole session is one of, of, of that nature. But if I'm just loose from the start, um, it, it has a good good chance of being loose all the way to the end. But you know, every day, your painting session is going to depend on your mood. Never know what you're going to get. And what you feel like painting one day, you're not even going to want to look at the next. Well, maybe. There was this guy that I, in grammar school, he would eat a tuna fish sandwich every single day for lunch. So. If you're the guy with the tuna fish sandwich and you're eating it every day for lunch, you probably would paint the same thing over and over, and that's cool. Uh, I like mixing it up a little bit. I'm more like tuna for a week and then off to a hamburger. It's kind of weird what you remember from grammar school. <laughs> I wonder if he remembers what I ate. Probably not. I don't remember. I know my mom packed me good snacks, though. Okay, so where else is there some sky? I'm just basing, blocking it all in. I think I was heavier. Uh, normally the sky is supposed to be darker at the top and then get lighter as it goes down. But I'm just, I decided I would just put a uniform coat all over the place. I think that needs to be lighter. And deal with the difference later. Or else are there some little holes? Let's see, up here. And I see some sky right through here. I'm picking up some pencil line, but that's okay. It'll all be all right in the end. I'm painting right over the bell rope. I know it's there, but I just need, needed that for reference. That's great. Roughed in the sky. Okay. Now I could go crazy and add a little bit of red at the top, which I'm really tempted to go get some straight red and just put it at the top. But I'm not sure how it's going to be in relationship to this, this whole building, so I thought I'd better hold off. Um, so practical me would hold off until the end and see how all the relationships work. But I want to see now. <laughs> It's going to work. So I'm going to add a little straight red to the top. This is what I would actually do at home if I wasn't worried about you watching, so I might as well do it here. So I'm grabbing some straight red, and I'm just pulling it down so I don't contaminate my, my straight tube color up there. Now my brush has already got paint on it. So it'll tone it down a little bit. I'm not going to pick up a lot because you know, I am worried about overdoing it. I put my brush in here and take some of it off as I'm doing it. So you can see it's a little bit lighter than what's on the palette. I'm going to start at the very top. I don't want to make it too dark because this cross is dark, and so I really want that to stand out against the sky. But I do want some extra color, and I'm just going to push put that in really quick. Just at the very top. 
And I'm not going to get any more paint on my brush. I'll just work it as I go down. There'll be less paint on my brush, and that'll help it blend. I don't want it to be an obvious straight line, so I'm kind of squiggling it. There. That's enough. It's just a subtle dif difference. doesn't really show right now, but I don't want to spend all day on the sky. We've got to start working on the mission. So, All right, so the background is this. The whole thing is backlit, and so there's warmth back here. Now I'm going to start on some of the cooler colors of the mission, and um, I think I'll start with the shadows first. Yeah. I'm going to make some violets, because you know I love the violets in the shadow. So take a little bit of... I'll take some of that red mixture, add a little bit of blue, ultramarine blue, and then to tone that down, let's see how dark is that. Do I want a nice little violet there? Add a little bit of purple. Okay, I don't want this to be over the top with color at this point. That's too bright for that, that area. Oh, I love the color, but it's just a little too bright. So I need to neutralize this. I'm going to take some more blue, a little bit of green, some of that red. Whoa. Okay, <laughs> I neutralized that puppy, all right? That's not what I wanted, but I sure did neutralize it. Okay, so now in order to get that to where I want it to go, I'll add a little more red, only this time a cooler red. That's good. Oh, that's a nice color. Is it what I want? I think it's a little too warm. Uh, a little more blue. There we go. Now that's a beautiful gray. And it's going to be harmonious because it had all its neighbors mixed in. And I'm going to put this in the darkest part. It's going to be my darkest area here. So... Darkest part is going to be under all the underneath little, little arches. Now, have I drawn the arches perfectly? No, I could, they could use some correction. I'm going to rough them in. We could tidy them up later. Now, the other thing is the practical person would have put in the lights first and then put the darks in later because if you, uh, it's easier to go over the top of light than it is to go over the top of a dark. Um, but my, um, <laughs> I wasn't being practical. I wanted to paint that area and that's where I went. So, so there are things that you know that you should do, but you know what? This is all about having fun. Yep, that's a nice, nice gray. Nice gray. As opposed to a bad gray, bad gray. I've done some of those before. All right, let's see. What does that do? There are a lot of subtleties in this area, but right now we're doing big shapes. And then after we do the big shapes, we'll see if we have time. Okay, that was that was pretty good. I think I chopped that off here. So let's fix this shape. All right, where else is there some dark? Down here. Okay, so in the beginning, I was painting wildly. Slow down a little bit as you go. Have to be a little more careful in these areas. I'm still not using a tiny brush. I didn't even bring tiny brushes today. You'll notice there's a whole jar missing. Okay, that looks good. And the roof's going to cover that. Great. OK, 
Getting the other arch. There's so many wonderful things to paint at the mission. You typically, you know, and they're, it, it, what you paint is really a matter of what, what really interests you. There are people who really like doing the whole building and every arch. And if you've seen the show before, you know that I really like to take a section of something and focus on, get a close-up. It's like, it's like talking to one person as opposed to talking to a group. I really like to hear what, what they have to say. Okay, so those now we have three nice little dark blobs. And those are nice, nice cool grays. I don't see anything as dark as that. Um, later, if we have time, we'll go in and lighten these little areas right here. But I want to get the canvas covered first. All right, so what's going on under the roof? Uh, that's a reddish, it's more of a reddish tile area under, the, under there. So I'm going to add some red to this nice little gray color. Better get something to wipe my knife with. So I'm going to keep some of that pure, leave that here, move some of this over, add the cool red, where it's still in the shadow here, to this. Now that's just a little too sweet for me. Painters talk about doing sweet colors, and there are people who do... Um, Oh, more pastel-y colors, and um, mine aren't. There we go. Okay, so that's still a little too bright, so I'm going to add a little gray to that. And instead of gra grabbing the gray mixture, which has some white, I'll add a little bit of blue and a little bit of this green. And I flip my knife, okay, because I was lazy. I put, my, I put my knife in the mixture here. And I didn't want to have to clean it first, so one side of it's got this blue, the other side has the green. That way I can grab two colors at once and not have to wipe my knife. Oh, that was pretty. I think that might work. Okay, that's going to be the shadow part of the tile. I'm going to grab that same old dirty brush and see if it works. All right, so I'm just putting a... So there's just a slight variation here. Now in sunlight, this mission looks as entirely different color. It's very warm. But in a backlit situation, it's, it's different. And the way I paint, even my warms, even my cools are not real cool. They're still warm on the warm side. Because that's how I like it. And that's the point of painting. That's why you make a red sky. You can't, just because you can. I love it when the kids, you know, they're in a class and they paint a sky purple. It's just great. It makes them happy. Okay, so that's dark, and then, you know, even the top of this is not, not real light, so I'm going to add some more red, make it a little bit brighter, but not a lot. I have to add a little cad red to this just because it's tr too transparent. It's just the pigment. Oh, that's beautiful. I say that about all the reds. <laughs> yes, I do. All right, so we've got a little bit of tile here, and it's a little uneven, and that's what happens over a couple hundred years or more. Okay, and there's some more. Looks like there's some more roof here I didn't catch. So I'm going to go back into this area and this color. My reference photo is not as good as the, uh, the reference that you're seeing on, you know, what you can see on the screen is a lot more detail. Okay, so there's some dark out there, and the rest of this is going to start being building. 
That's good. It's a good shot. Okay. Now I'm going to put the base color in because I really should have started with the light first, but I was just so excited about the shadows that I, that I had to start there. Now I'm going to quickly put in a base coat on the cool side of this, this part of the mission at Bell Tower. And that way I can add color into it later, but I've got a nice uh, solid base and I can, um, I'll have the canvas covered. You paint a little differently when you know you have a certain time constraints. All right, so this is cool. I'm going to add, uh, but it's not totally cool. So I'm going to add, I love this fallow turquoise. That's just a nice, I'm going to put that right in the red. And then just because I, I need some violet in there. It's a nice gray. Well, that's pretty. Now, if, if this is nothing like the color that's there. So I'm totally, totally changing, totally imposing color. I'm adding, I'm going to add some purple. Why? Is there a logical reason? No, you can gray this down with a lot of different colors. I'm adding purple just because it makes me happy. You could pick um, any of these cool colors and it would work. So pick what you like an experiment. Oh, that's gorgeous. Now when I'm done, this is not going to read Purple Mission, um, but it'll have some nice color surprises. All right, that's, that's a great purple. It's too dark, so I'm grabbing this whole bit of white. That's nice. That's a good base. Now it looks good on the palette. See what it looks like next. I'm going to hold my knife up, see if I like it. Because we've got to have that dark, a little darker. Yep, that's going to work. Okay. Had to make sure it was going to work before I put it down. So I'm taking the dirty brush with the sky color. Going to mix it in this violet. And this is going to be the base for this part of the building. All right, let's see what we have some more hair. And I'm going to throw in, I just see bits of, it's got to be a little warmer for me, so I'm going to throw in a bit of Cad Yellow Deep. Oh, that was good. I like that so much, I'm going to throw some more on top. But I must quit playing with this and get the canvas covered, so I'm going to stop. Now, if you look at the palette here, this is probably one of the coolest paintings I've worked on in a long time. And it's interesting how that, I'm not fighting it, that's just how it's coming out, that's what we're going to paint, that's what's happening today. And wow, I had picked up some, uh, I got so lucky, I got totally lucky. Okay, I picked up some of this um, dark hair from the shadow. But where it actually went was, was accidentally, it was right up here where the shadow is here. So it's cool. <laughs> I don't have to blend it. I don't do have to do anything. And I love it when you get lucky like that. It's great. It's like a built-in shadow. Now, I could have told you that I meant to do that, but that would be lying. OK, I can see right now, just looking at it, that this is too cool compared to this. There's just not enough. I can't go any further because there's not enough contrast there, and that's going to bug me. So one of two things has to happen. Either this has got to be warmer, or, and this has got to be, you know, got to either warm this up or cool this down. So I think I need to throw some 
orange in the background and really make that warm. So Indian yellow might be a little over the top, but I'm going to try it anyway. Oh yeah, that's great. You know what, sometimes over the top is just fun. And I'm just scribbling. It's okay to scribble. Remember, we're here to have fun. You know, I was on a plane, plane ride to Chicago this week. And there's, so a lot, my favorite thing to do on the plane is to sketch whoever's in the in-flight magazine. I'll just pick a celebrity and start sketching them. And it passes the time. It goes by really quickly. But the other thing is, is and I, I take a pen. I won't bring an eraser. So whatever happens, happens. So you're, you're bumping up and down. People are bumping your elbow. So you're not expecting perfection. You're just there for the total experience. And um, that's when I learned to scribble really good. And you can make some really cool things when you scribble. OK, I love this warmth back here. This is happy. It's like the sky's having a party. OK, now it's safe to go back to the mission. It's like when you go to a dance and you have fast songs and slow songs. If you don't have that contrast, it's not going to work. You get too tired out there <laughs> or bored, either one. You got, so you got to have that contrast in a painting to make it work. All right, so now we've got this nice warm and cool thing going on. We can proceed. I didn't make a huge value difference. It's not any lighter or darker, but it's warmer. All right. That's working. All right. Now, now this whole part is going to go a lot faster because I, because I'm confident of where I'm going. Now, doesn't a trip like that on the highway feel like that too? When you know exactly where you're going? Well, I don't know exactly, but I got a good idea. Because just like a trip, you know, things happen. You have to make adjustments. And like anything else, when you got unexpected things, it's all in my attitude how they work out. So if, if I've got a good attitude, I can deal with it. If I don't, I have a little more trouble. So I try to do the same thing when I paint. Whoa, <laughs> I'm beating on this canvas. You can see the whole easel moving. I picked up some red there, but that was okay. That just added to it. Whoops. <laughs> that was an accident too, but I'll just blend that in. Add some interest. Might as well add some over there too. All right, we got some here. I need a little more medium because it's not flowing that good. I want to thank all you guys who've been writing in with questions and comments and 
if uh, you're not sure how I did something or you have a question about your own painting, you can sure email me at shannon at shannongrissom.com. I'd love to hear from you. It's great to get your feedback. Picked up some more gray, but that's all right. These little arches look, remind me of little eyeballs. Okay, where else do I see that color? It's actually pretty much right here, too. We'll just add a little bit of... We'll put the darks in over the top. It's a quick way to get it done. Somehow I grabbed a little extra violet there, but that's all right. It's nice to have variety. So you can tell that I'm roughing this in and I'm not making perfect little shapes. You want to just cover the canvas first. When you're writing, you do, you know, you just kind of put it all out there first and then clean it up. It's the same thing with painting. Although, I don't know, my sister can pretty much, my sister's amazing. She could actually sit down and write something from start to finish and have it be perfect. But uh, my writing doesn't work that way and neither does my painting. Let's see, what's going on down there? I was losing my place. I know, it's a whole lot of violet. We'll start spicing it up in a minute. But this whole thing has to make sense. Okay, so that's more violet here. We're just filling in all these, the same color everywhere. I'm going to lift up the painting a little bit, get some of these other areas blocked in. That's more, there's actually some more bells down there that I didn't get. Didn't get in the picture. And you know how I hate having to make something even, so it's great because I don't have to worry about making all the little bells match. Okay, that's a good base. I'm going to throw in a little bit of the uh, shadow area. I'm going to use a different brush for that. Got to wipe my hands so I don't get purple all over. Well, this gray is a nice shadow color. I'm gonna use a flat brush for the for this area, these areas here. I'm not gonna worry about. You know what? I need to blend that a little bit because that that happy accident wasn't quite in the right place. So I'm just gonna blend that up. And then there's a line that was left there, so you have to pretend like you didn't do what you just did. There. All right, so I cleaned up that line a little bit. Now, back to the flat brush. It's, it's a flat head, and so it makes it easier for drawing straight lines. This is going to be relatively straight, because, you know, straight is a term of elasticity with me. It, uh, I just kind of get it in the right place. It works. So you notice that this shadow has some red in it. One, well, number one, because I love red, Number two, it makes it a little more interesting, so it's not this boring, everything is gray. Because in the real world, when you look at this building, there are so many beautiful colors in this mission. And the longer you look, it's like, you, you know, just wow, amazing. Great patina on this building. It's a great meditation to just sit there and look at the building.
Okay, so there's a little bit of darker line there. And I'm just going to vary the color slightly. We don't want it all the same. Oops, that was a little too bright for right there. So I'll just go over it. And I'm cleaning up my lines here. Some of them anyway. Yeah, that's better. Okay, now let's address these edges a little bit. Uh, they look pretty dark here, but I know it has a tile roof. Well, I'm going to make it a little reddish. I'd probably make it reddish even if I didn't. See, that's a little too, needs to be a little more subdued than that. I'm having trouble because you know me, I like the reds to be really bright. So I'm having to tone them down a little and that's, um, that's like telling a kid who's excited about something to be quiet. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> I'm not going to put the little pigeon wire stuff up there. I'm just pretending it's not there. That's the other cool thing about paintings. You can just pretend things aren't there. I'll clean up some of that purple later. Some of those edges. Again, due to the time constraints, I'm just trying to get it pretty much covered. For those of you that don't know, that have never seen this show before, we film this live to tape. And what that means is once we start taping, we don't shut the cameras off, so what you're seeing is what you're getting. And we like to do this so that you get a real good feel for what it's actually like to paint. And you can get an idea of how much can be accomplished in an hour. Okay, let's get some of this top done. All right. Now where else? I have some little more detail right here that I need to put in. It's kind of hard to see because I'm in the way. Those lines aren't very straight, but I, I'll clean those up later. But if you look at the mission, there's, there's uh, all kinds of interesting lines and angles going on. It's been around a few hundred years. Okay, so I need to continue on with the shadow. So I'm going to go ahead and get this shadow side of the building put in now. Now, up, up top here is a lot darker than what's on the side. So I'm going to take that, add a little bit of white to it. A little bit of that violet from the body color. And then I'm going to hold it up and see if I like it. I like it. I'm going to take the dirty, dirty brush because it's got some of that other color. Maybe just <laughs> has a little bit too much red, so I'm going to have to tone that down a well. little. Can't believe you heard me say that, huh? Okay, so. Oh, that's nice. Whoops, I can see where I forgot to paint some of the violet. So I'll put that in right now. I just start losing my place. I get distracted.
And then I'll go ahead and put these lines back in so that makes sense, a little bit of the roof. And then go back to the, I don't want that to be the same color. And then go back to the shadow area. And it is the same color, so I'm going to take some blue and go right over the top of that with straight blue. And even a little more because I don't think I have enough. There. Ooh, that green's pretty. That was an accident, but I like it. And then there's some shadow under here. And a little, little line right in here. Okay, that's good. Back to the shadow. As it gets closer to the uh, sunlight, it gets lighter, but it's still not light, light. Let's see, I'll grab a little red. Paint around that bell. Kind of lost my little straight line there, but you get the idea. And we have the same, pretty much the same color going on down here, too. So I'm going to carry this right down here. Oops. That got a little whiter than it needed to be, but I'll clean that up. Whoop. <laughs> I forgot I had it up here and almost knocked my canvas over. Sometimes I do that and it scares me. Okay, so that slider. This, I'm going to actually throw in some light right in here, right over the top of that. That's probably the easiest way to deal with this. Now I need to put it back in its place before I knock it over again. Yeah, that's, that's close. And uh, now I'm stepping back to see if it's starting to take on some dimension. It really is. It's starting to look kind of like a mission. Even though it's rough, so I hope that you're getting a good idea that even though in its rough state, you can start to get an, a sense of place and sense of what's going on. Okay. Those brown, we've got the bell going on there. Ooh, this is a little interesting over here. It's got some dark and it's got some light, so I'm going to take a little bit of uh, some of that little turquoise, just because I like it, and because it's a nice dark blob over here. And uh, let's just put that right here. I know it's a little adventurous for this color this area. I had to try. And then there's more of a reddish stuff going on here, so I'm taking that straight, you know, you know, in the beginning of the show, I mix everything carefully, keep my colors clean, but by the end, I'm taking my dirty brush and going up into the straight tube color. So. Um, that's another thing. You want, you want to try to keep it clean, but this is what really happens. Okay, where was I? Uh, I like that red. That's a nice little red going on here. And um, there's some light there, and this is some nice red, too. Beautiful. And then let's throw in some more light here. It's more of a pinky color. That's the technical term for pinky color. I'm making it a little warmer, but I don't want it to be the same as the uh, sky. There's a danger there. That's dark, too. That's got some more violet, so let's just slap some violet in here.
And what's that doing over here? This is dark, so I'm going to get my trusty flat brush. They're trusty for a little while till they get old, and then you gotta you gotta replace them. They start splaying all over the place. That's these are some funny looking angles here. Ah, I kind of got them right, and I kind of got them wrong, and I don't care. <laughs> I'm just gonna put them in. And that needs a little bit of. Uh, we got red. We want to make sure I don't lose my place here. Some light here. That's light. Okay, I'm going to add a little red around the edge. Come down in the home stretch, we'll be able to do the bells and hopefully start playing a little tiny bit. Not that we haven't been playing the whole time here. But you know what I mean. I think you do. All right, I'm going to throw in some more violet. Just clean up some of these areas. Add a few of the little lines in there just to help it make sense. Needs to be a little bit darker in value. That's close. You'll notice I am not worried about making perfect things. When I go back in there later, I will clean it up. Right now, what I'm trying to do is show you how to apply the paint and get a good start on something. So even in this raw state, you can see the dimension. All right, I need to quick make some nice little browns for that wood, those beams. Green and red make some happy browns. They make some sad browns too, depending on the green and the red, but I'm, <laughs> I'm working on happy browns. Okay, yeah, that's good. Okay, nice dark coppery color. What brush do I want? Picked up this one, and it uh, it doesn't have uh, it's pointy, it's old, and, and um, it doesn't have a lot of control left. So I'm going to use this one here. All right, we've got some beams going across here. Come down at the bottom. I'm going to use just two values for the bell just to get it started. It's a bronzy, I'll add a little red to it just because it's kind of this. It's got that coppery color to it, but it's a bronzy color too, and it's in the shadow, so it, there's not a lot of, uh, yeah, that doesn't look like I did anything different. I'm grabbing some orange, make that a little bit lighter. Still, if it's backlit, you're not going to be able to tell. But, you know, I like, you, you, th when something's backlit, you lose most of the form. Now, for somebody like me, and form is one of my favorite things to paint, you don't see me doing too many things that are backlit because that, it's, it, it just, it's awkward for me. So I'm going to impose some form even though you don't see it just because I can't help it. <laughs> I just can't help it. So I'm going to stick some uh, dark in here, make that little bell so you can see underneath it. And I'm just going to add some violet to this brown mix. Oh, that's nice. I'm 
and that's starting to give it the sense of uh, the, the three-dimensional sense. And I'm going to take the same violet, put it around the edges, so we have a little bit of form going on, and clean up that shape of the bell. It actually goes over here. We got a little bell rope going on. I gotta clean up that 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 angle is a little messy too. All right, so oh goodness, we have to put the cross in. Okay, so what am I gonna do in this first initial stage? I'm just gonna roughly, lightly, put in the just the base so I know where it is, and so that when it dries, I can go back and fix it. And I'm just gonna just put in the base. I am not putting in all the little filigree stuff yet. I will wait, because I'll probably go over the sky again, so why put in all the filigree and then paint over the top of it? So I'm just going to let that dry, and then I will uh, clean it up. Yeah, that's a, good, that's a good start. Okay. So now I get to add some fun here on some of the things that I'd really like to do. And at this point in the painting, when you have when you have the, most of the stuff roughed in and you want to see where to go next, what you really need to do is stand back and look and really get back from your painting. So I'm doing that by looking at the TV monitor in the mirror so that I can see what I need to do. All right, so this is cool. This could be even be more dramatic in the background. And there could be more blues and stuff going on in, on the mission. So I'm going to, like right here, I'm going to scribble in. So, oh, that's gorgeous. Because, you know, right under the eaves there, it's a little bit darker, huh? It's even got some of that blue in, in the reference photo. OK, so that's good. Then I'm going to throw in ah, a little bit of rust stuff when we make it blue. Maybe a little over here for some interest. Here, too. And I could turbocharge the background by putting in some. This might just take it over the top. But I have to try. I think I'm going to add some more Indian yellow. Now this stuff's really powerful. You got to use it in small doses. So even this little bit that I put on my brushes could be way too much. But uh, let's just oof. Yeah, that's a little bright. And you know what? So I'm going to have to go over the cross because I'm not going to paint around it. That's what I would do if I wasn't on TV. I'm brightening this up a little bit. Now, what happens when you do too much? Because you know that's going to happen if, you, you know, if you're brave at all. Or even if you're not brave, you just have little accidents. Well, I'll show you how to tone it down. Woof. I don't know. I think I'm going to I think I'm going to leave it for now and let it dry and just work on some of these cooler areas. But if you wanted to tone it down, I think the first thing to do is rather than trying to paint over it, take a paper towel, wipe some of it off first. And that took away all the texture and all the nice happy stuff that was going on, so I'm going to take some straight white and throw it over the top with a big brush and a lot of medium. There we go. Got some happy stuff going on back here again. And you'll notice the cross is totally obliterated. And if I were at home doing this, I would get the painting completely done 
have the background exactly like I liked it, then I would put the cross in at the very last minute. Because otherwise, you're painting around it and painting around it and trying to be careful. And I don't like to be careful when I paint. All right, so how can we spice this up again? OK, we got a little bit of yellow here, a little yellow there, a little more yellow here. At this point, it's just a little too wet to do anything else. But uh, I think this is a really, really good start. So where would I take it from here? Well, if you notice in the reference photo, the mission is a lot darker than the background. So I darken the background up, take some blues and violets and add even more to this stuff. And uh, I would continue to play with this, add some more reds and, until it was totally harmonious. Right now, um, I'm not happy with some of the color combinations. I think these two, these two are not singing. But uh, I, would, I would just work on it a little bit, just a little bit back and forth. I'm going to still continue to be adventurous with the sky. And um, I, may, I may paint that totally red. So what's the lesson for today? Try something different. You've got a picture you're not quite happy with, but you really like the subject matter. Try a different color sky. Be adventurous. Don't be afraid. Just give it a shot. Um, if you have any questions when you're painting, just email me at, Shannon, at shannongrissom.com. I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you so much for watching Give Your Wall Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom.